I think this becomes the contradiction, right, of the Fees Must Fall movement in the sense that it didn't fail the public, it didn't fail the generations that are coming after us, but it definitely did fail us as the youth and the generation of today. It would be a travesty to start speaking about us in history and to start writing books about us in ways that venerate or in ways that denounce us. It, it's always in a sense that it, they want us to take us back to that guilt tripping of why are you not even thinking about us, we are part of South Africa. But the entire time when they were thinking about themselves, they were not necessarily considering us as humans, right? I think for me, what's particularly interesting is, you know, the audience that was able to come through today for this discussion. It's a variety of people from different backgrounds, from different places around Johannesburg. Other people are even from Cape Town, which goes to show that the Fees Must Fall movement did have an impact in societies we didn't think were impacted because of the fact that we were so isolated away from the general public. So for me, the conversation was very constructive. The framing, though, might be very problematic because it assumes that Fees Must Fall first has concluded its, its mandate and we've gotten everything that we had hoped for which is not the case so for me I think the framing could have been a lot better but I do appreciate the fact that it, it happened here at the Apartheid Museum and you know in the presence of George Bezos in his own building I think that is also very significant I mean I'm always willing to learn from an older generation um, because I mean they are the ones who carry wisdom and have experience Obviously today was about fullism and, and the fullest movement and what it really stood for. But one thing that, that I think, one interesting thing that I think it did was to actually highlight on the black condition, right? And on the decolonial project essentially. And I think that's what essentially what fullism is about. Um, and we ended up having a conversation that is really important about where are we as, as, as a country, where are we and what does it mean to live in a state where it is apparently post-apartheid state, right? And what it means to us as young people, as young black people. But one of the things that I think it also highlighted is that fallism or the fees must fall was not necessarily just about um, fees, right? It was not necessarily just about us getting access, but rather to what kind of education are we getting access to, right? And how do we then begin to reimagine and rethink um, the, the, uh, our state of being in this country, right? And that's what essentially the decolonization project is about. One of the things that unfortunately happened with the 1994 compromise is that we were so concerned about unity, we were so concerned about making sure that people get along and exist side by side, that we neglected the damages that had been done to black communities as a result of colonization. And so I think today, and naturally so for a panel on decolonization. It was a, a, a going back, you know, a, a, a connecting with the primary articulations that the uh, fallist movement was making from the beginning. And, and, you know, articulations that have been totally, totally neglected in, in the Rainbow Nation discourse uh, that forms part of our dominant narrative in South Africa. And so, you know, we need, we can't speak about decolonizing a society and not put black people at the center. And I think that is the, 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 the broad point or the, the biggest point or the biggest takeaway for me. It is black people's interests, black people's land, black people's wealth, black people's psychological well-being, black people's culture, that needs to be restored. And that total restoration cannot be sidelined by the fact that we want to have a, uh, an integrated society.